What's up, everybody? We're in Tucson at the University of Arizona. We got a big day planned for you. Special shout out to Kinetrax for making this all possible. Make sure you like and subscribe on the vid. Stick around for the end of the video. We got some merch we're gonna give away. Bear down. Here with Chip Hale, head coach of the University of Arizona. Uh, first things first, thanks so much for having us today. Uh, excited to be here. So right here we're standing in the entrance of the facility, uh, kind of the players team room. Uh, got the locker room behind us, which we'll go see. Um, talk to me a little bit about what's so great about this team room. I know it's brand new. Um, what kind of experience does it help give your players, you know, day-to-day -day basis having to be in the facility long days? Why do you like this team room? Right. Well, number one, uh, there's a code to get in. And the players have these, the code, and they can be in here anytime. So if they are bored at their apartment or the dorm, they can come on over here and, and uh, spend some time here in the, in the lounge, the kitchen, the clubhouse, anywhere. Um, so that's the first thing for them. Uh, player development-wise, uh, it was a huge addition for us. You know, we, re we gutted the building. Um, they redid this part of it. Um, the big thing is, number one, they can come and relax, have their food in here. Um, somewhere to sit, somewhere to rest. But the bigger, bigger part in the player development is we have the, the screens back here, we have all the computers, we do a lot of our scouting here. So before we, we play a game, we'll take our batting practice, uh, we'll come in, we'll have smoothies. Uh, the hitters will all sit down at 5 o'clock for a 6 o'clock game, and we'll go over the pitcher completely on our, um, with our video and our hitting coach, uh, Toby DeMello, will, will uh, show them everything we need to know for the game. So it's, it's, a, it's a place, and when we're teaching in the, in the uh, fall program, uh, we can come here and do anything we want, put anything on the, on the, the screens we want, to show them um, to make them better. And that's what we're here to for is player development. Um, the other thing is they have full reign of these computers. So they have logins. Uh, they can work on them anytime they want, look at their own stuff, look at the picture they're going to face this week. If it's a weekend series against Stanford or UCLA, they can, they can check out the guys. So, um, you know, we wanted a, a, a place where they could, they could do this and be away from uh, you have, not having to be in their lockers, not having to be in their dorm rooms or their uh, apartments. How about culture-wise, just from a team-building standpoint, how important do you think it is for guys to spend time together off the field yeah. in a space like this to build culture? Yeah, well, we've noticed a big jump last year. You know, we didn't have this two years ago, um, and guys would get done. Um, it was hard enough to get them to take a shower. You know, they, they, were, they were out of here, their, dorm, their, their dorms, their, their apartments are close to the, the place. So I'm just going to shower at home. Here they want to hang out. Uh, they get their shower in. There's some more food for them. They, got, they have snacks all the time. Um, they like to hang out and watch games. So, yeah, it has helped a lot. It's a beautiful space. Standing here in the kitchen, um, fully stocked, looks good. We talk about player development, um, obviously, right. and I think one of the things that sometimes can fly under the radar is feeding guys to keep that strength going, to keep them, you know, it helps keep them healthy, it helps keep them uh, feeling good. Talk about why this is important, this space, the kitchen, what kind of things that they can get into in here. Right. No, you're exactly right. The development part, uh, you know, you we're trying to build their bodies, uh, their minds, uh, and the way, you know, we have to feed them. That's the one thing when I first got here, uh, the coaches who've been around college baseball for a long time said, hey, we got to, you know, we got to raise money. Um, we have to be able to feed these guys. So we do a good job. We, they have breakfast over on campus at uh, Bear Down Kitchen where all our athletes get breakfast. Uh, we have the kitchen here that's available 24 hours a day, like we said, the lounge, the clubhouse. These guys can come in any time. There's bagels. There's, uh, they can make some um, sandwiches. We've got the Uncrustables there that just go, they fly off the, uh, out of that fridge. Um, so we have a lot of things they're able to eat. But the bottom line is you're exactly right. If they're not fed, we can't, affect them. We can't effectively you know, teach them out there on the field. They're not going to be able to do it, especially in the weather we have. You know, we have hot weather. Um, we have usually here, it's, it's empty right now, but this is going to be all our hard, hydration stuff. We have our vitamins here. They can just pump it, um, get that every day. Uh, you know, and like I said, we got the protein. Um, we make smoothies with our smoothie makers right. before the game. So we're very blessed. We're very blessed. Our donors have done a really good job of, and this was when we did this, the, the training room and the kitchen were the two things that we really wanted to improve. Um, and we have, and I think our players have, have, have been able to be, uh, be more fed and stronger and ready to go every day.
Yeah, it's so important. Again, sometimes I feel like it flies under the radar a little bit. It does. It does. All right, we're now standing in the locker room. Beautiful facility here too. Um, kind of carrying over from the team room, the culture aspect of having kind of a locker room that's shaped like this, all the lockers on the outside, right. couches on the inside, guys being able to spend time together outside of practice, outside of the dugout. How important is it to you to see, and how much fun is it for you to see, you know, come in here and see the guys having a blast together yeah. when it doesn't have anything to do with baseball? Well, you know, from my pro experience, um, I try to stay out of this area as much as I can. I try to say, you know, each team you get each year, whether it's, you know, A ball, big leagues, college, uh, high school, each sort of creates its own identity, right? So I want these guys to just do their thing in here. Um, so the older players kind of police it. Uh, there's every now and then that the coaches will have to come in and, you know, we'll, we'll you know, maybe highlight a locker here and say, hey, this is what it's supposed to look like. Let's, you know, you know, be proud to be an Arizona Wildcat. Uh, this is a very special place to be. Uh, and we don't want your, you know, st look like a garbage can in your locker. So um, other than that and uh, some team meetings that we have in here, I try to stay out of here and let these guys have their fun. Standing here in another place that I think is, is really important for player development. In the past, you know, it was, might have been bugaboo to come in this room because yeah. if you're in here, that means you're, you're injured and you can't play. <laughs> Times have changed. Yes. Why is it important to, you know, create a culture where guys want to come in here and feel comfortable coming here to take care of their bodies? Right. Well, you said it. Player development. Uh, if you don't want to get hurt, you need to come in here. You know, you need to come in here, get stretched out, get your massage, um, cupped, um, all these different things that the trainers do now to make you feel better so you can go out and play better. Um, but yeah, you're right. In the old days, you can't make the club in the tub. That was mm -hmm. the old saying, and um, just ridiculous. Some of the stuff we went through, whether it was food, you know, eating McDonald's every day. We talked about it earlier. Um, the two biggest things of why we redid this place was the kitchen and the training room. When I showed up here, um, the cold tub was basically a kid's pool you'd buy at Walmart. So we, we put the nice tubs in, hot, cold. Um, we got the beautiful tables, um, just a place where they feel comfortable coming in. Uh, and it's important. We have great, you know, we, we take really good care in who we hire as our trainers, who we bring in here to do the massage stuff. Um, our strength coaches, um, they all use this area. Um, they're all trained in all these things. So uh, it's super important for player development. You get food in them. You get them physically ready to play out there, and then we can make them the best players they can be. Talk about playing 50, 60 games. It's a long season, right. especially if you go to where, get to where you want right. to go. Talk about how important it is for the coaching staff yourself to have a good relationship, communication with the support staff, like the trainers right. and, and, and the you know, strength coach. Yeah, everybody. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, equipment manager. Um, in college, you have to be, have a good relationship with your whole department. Right. You know, if you want your, your, your program to be successful, um, every, it's got, everybody's got to be all in, right? And you can hear that in, everywhere, whether it's a major league team. Um, you got to be all in. So, yeah, our trainers are super important. We talk every day. We get a report every day. Um, the strength coach and I talk. You know, I try to be at every session we do in our, uh, our beautiful weight facility at, at McHale Center. Um, so we're very, very lucky to have really, really good people here, and we got to keep them. So here we have our arm care room. Um, mostly pitchers. You know, some position players will come in here and stretch and get stretched out a little bit. Uh, but you'll come in here before practice, before a game, before BP. Uh, you'll have 10, 12 guys in here doing their stretching, uh, doing their movement prep. Whatever Kevin, uh, Vance, John DeRoyan, our two pitching guys, um, sort of give them all the information. Uh, each pitcher is a little different physically, so they do different exercises. Um, you got all the balls over here. They'll be throwing them off the, off the walls. They'll be, you know, doing all their stuff, all the cuff weights. Uh, different things. It's not our weight room, but it's a place for them, like we talked about, player development, get them ready to be the best guy that can be out there. In your opinion, when you talk about a lot of this stuff, because how important is building a routine for these guys? That's it. That's, yeah. that's everything. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done it for years with hitters, right? We go in the cage. Um, you'll see when you go out to our cage, each hitter has to write down what their movement prep is. Before they even grab a bat, 
Um, they're doing different exercises, whether with a Frisbee, whether it's you know, with a, a physio ball, whatever it is, they have to do that. Well, now Kevin and John have brought it to the, where the pitchers, they have, and, and like you said, it's different for every guy. It's not the same thing. It's what kind of body are you, a squatty guy like me? Are you a tall, skinny guy that's aerial and all these different things that we know now? Um, it's gone so far above from when I played um, where basically you had coaches just basically copying what other people did. Right. You know, now we're taking the body and looking at it, and this is one of the areas we're able to do that. So we're now in the Hall of Champions. Um, really cool space, I think, kind of connecting the past with the present. Right. Um, Talk about why this, this space was important to put in here when you were redoing the facilities. Um, obviously, see Trevor Hoffman, one of the greatest to ever do it. Yep. Um, pretty cool space, in, yeah. in my opinion. No, it's really cool. And like you said, bring the past, now the present. Um, obviously, over here, we have sort of the, the conferences we've been in. And this was sort of the last thing we did. We're like, what can we do here that would be meaningful, you know, to show people kind of, like you said, the past. So we were in the border conference. A lot of people didn't know that for years and years. We were in the WAC and then got into the Pac-12, a Pac-10 to the Pac-12. Now we're in the Big 12. Obviously, there's nothing here at the Big 12. <laughs> it was our first year. We're super excited to get in there. Uh, we have a couple more trophies from last year. Of course, the, the regular season and the conference tournament uh, trophies. We'll take the glass off here before school starts and put those in there. Um, but, yeah, there's some neat stuff there, some alumni stuff. And... Um, so yeah, really cool. Over here, like you said, Trevor Hoffman's our Hall of Famer. Uh, we're hoping in a couple of years, Terry Francona gets put in and we'll, we'll split it up between the two of them. Uh, but Trevor's been nothing but the best to us, obviously. Um, you know, just down to earth guy that's, that's helped this program a ton, whether it's financially or just talking to the team, he's been fantastic. So we were very blessed to have a, a great alumni. Uh, as we move back into here, um, we got all our gear, you know, the gear's the stuff now, right? Uh, we're obviously a Nike school, um, Wilson, uh, Louisville, and Evo Shield. So we, we put all our cool stuff up, and our guys get, get, uh, get a lot of stuff. A lot different than when I was in school. I was here in the <laughs> 80s, and we got blue shorts and gray t-shirts. Yep, yep. And uh, so obviously a lot of cool stuff they get, and they get to keep it, and, uh, you know, bags and backpacks. And then we have our uniforms over here. Um, these are four of them. We have actually have six. We have a pinstripe white and we have a navy blue one that's over in the other office. But um, yeah, we just redid this. We got the baby blues. It's been a big hit. I was going to say, are the guys, so are the guys superstitious about any of these jerseys? We uh, yeah. So what happened was towards the end of the year, we started playing really well. Um, we had a military weekend. So you saw, see the yep. um, camouflage hat. So we ended up wearing the camouflage hat a lot with our red jersey. That was kind of the one. Uh, we actually got eliminated by uh, Dallas Baptist in the regional here in Tucson, and we had the red with a camp. They thought that was going to help them. So, um, yeah, I think we all get a little superstitious with that stuff. But, do yeah. You, do you have a personal favorite? Um, well, I will, this was my white. This is actually Terry's uniform. If you look at the back of this, they say Francona on the back. But um, that's a white uniform I wore when I was here. I think they're all cool because we, we got to um, redo these this year. So the white one we got when we first got here, and then the red, gray, light blue, and the navy blue we redid. And I think they're all, I mean, it was funny when we brought them out this year, the guy's like, this is my favorite. And then the next day, this is my favorite. So <laughs> I like them all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that, we got the, the uh, picture here of um, High Corbett on our first regional game against Grand Canyon. The game didn't go well for us, but uh, we had 9,000 people in the stadium, what which was atmosphere. a pretty incredible deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys have one of the, uh, this is personal, but I yeah. think you guys and have like, one of the yeah. best logos. And sports. like I was telling, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. I, I was telling you earlier, this, a lot of people don't know, but this is where Major League was filmed. Right. This is so this was the old uh, Cleveland Indians site for spring training, then it was the Rockies, um, and of course the great movie, it was actually filmed when I was in school, so it was, it was pretty cool. That's uh, we come over here, we got the uh, trophies, the College World Series, uh, very proud of our four. Uh, you know, we need to get another one here soon, but um, 76, uh, 1980, 1986, and 2012. So uh, Coach Jerry Kendall won the three, and then Andy Lopez, another Hall of Fame coach, 
uh, in 2012. And they've been back. Jay took them in 16, Jay Johnson, and then in uh, 21 they were back. So, um, you know, we made the regional every year, but we got we to gotta take that next step to the Super Regionals and, and hopefully get to Omaha. Soon enough. And then- yeah. And then it's all our professional um, drafted players, uh, all the different teams and uh, where they were drafted. Uh, a lot of great players on there. And I was telling you earlier, uh, we don't have all our free agents on here. So the draft started in 65 to see uh, the Indians, uh, the Guardians, excuse right. me, <laughs> uh, in 65. This is where their spring training was. So there was a lot of guys drafted out of here. Um, so we don't have any of our free agents on there. There would be a lot more players that actually played in the big leagues. Um, but it's hard to find all the names. I want to be fair to everybody before we can do that. Absolutely. And talk a little bit about why it's important for your guys today to see this wall here. Yeah, well, that's why they're here. Right. You know, the University of Arizona is a great program. Um, I, you know, obviously when they come here, I want them, number one, I want them to get a degree. And if they don't get their degree, they should be three years on their way to getting their degree when they're drafted as a junior. Um, but the bottom line is if you come to play baseball at the University of Arizona, you should aspire to play in the major leagues. Um, it's hard, and they know that. They'll know when they leave there if they have a chance. Um, obviously, if they get drafted, they have a good chance. But, um, yeah, they see this. They can come in here anytime they want. They'll see names They'll see names on there they don't know. Maybe they can research them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's part of being a Wildcat. Yeah, it helps to stay inspired. Yeah, exactly. You see this every day. Out here on High Corbett Field with Arizona's pitching coach Kevin Vance. Um, thanks for being out here. I uh, kind of want to stroll around the grounds here. Uh, first things first, it's pretty good showing up to work here every day. Not bad. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Weather. Yeah, beautiful weather, beautiful setting here. Um, what's the atmosphere like on game day? Um, kind of what's your favorite thing about, you know, Friday night, conference game, getting ready to go? You're in the coach's office getting ready. What's your favorite thing to look forward to here on a game day? Well, it, it, every time, every Friday night, it's fun to come out and see who's here, you know, I think the town comes out, which is cool. It's a lot of students, um, but we play for Tucson too, right? Like Tucson comes out for us and, um, you know, it, it's cool to see in our regional when it was filled up, right? It was close to 10,000 people and um, they get into it, yeah. right? And stomping their feet, there's, you know, we got some bleachers, so it gets loud and you can really feel the crowd, right? And I think it is an advantage to us and, you know, I think, Teams have trouble when they come here, right? Yep. The dimensions are, are different. The fans are are awesome. So um, just it's good vibes and, and you know a good good mix of students and, and the town. Right? Like we play for Tucson, so the regional didn't go the way you guys wanted. But what yeah. was that 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 first night like here? Because it looked like just a, one of the best environments of all the right. regionals. What was that? What was that feeling <laughs> like being in the dugout? Uh, it was awesome. I mean, we it's a huge stadium, right? And and. I saw the very last seat filled up, the top left corner, and standing room only down the side, standing room only along the whole concourse. Um, and that was just special. I mean, it was a, an attendance record that we set. And, you know, because we were exciting. It was an exciting team. And, and you know, hosting was, was a big deal. And, and like I said, like, that when you host around here, people show up. Um, and obviously it didn't go how we want. That's baseball. Um, you know, <clears throat> hit by pitch and a homework. And, you know, that's it. It happens. Um, you know, but it was, uh, we were, if, you know, it got us going. Right. And and I think we're going to continue to fill that up. I think it was a great experience for our players being really young. Right. And and having a ton of uh, fans here and because there, there is pressure. Right. So like it becomes more of an advantage. The more we have experience with it, the more we, you know, the more we win, the more fans show up and, and the more pressure that we, you know, essentially have on ourselves, right? So I think that was the best part of all of it. It was, it was a great experience and just like, in general, a fun atmosphere to be in and, and a good, good learning curve for our guys too. Yeah, like I said, it looked amazing. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Outside of that regional, what's your favorite moment here uh, that, that you've experienced? Uh, it's my first season, yep. for sure. Uh, when Walty pitched in the last game of the regular season here, um, last game to win it all for all the marbles, the last Pac-12 ever. On senior day, Cam Walty is a senior. Um, I think he went into the eighth 
um, just carved up a really good team. Uh, but that was pretty special, uh, having everyone's parents were here, obviously, you know, all the seniors, uh, and to have a senior do it, uh, you know, that's been here for a while and is a, you know, a, the core of who we are and who we were last year as a pitching staff. He was our Mr. Reliable, and, you know, he, so that was definitely number one for me. Yeah. Uh, the, his pitching performance. Yeah. I mean, we walked him off, too. Yeah, like, you, you know, can't beat it. We always did that. We did it almost every game, yeah. I feel like. Um, now, I'm assuming you're calling the game. Yes, sir. Pitching coach. Yeah. In the dugout, where's your spot? Are you, uh, are you someone who likes yeah. to switch it up, superstitious? <laughs> hey, we threw good when I was here, so are you the same spot every time? Uh, I, yeah, I'm not superstitious in a sense of, like, I, we're going to win if I stand here. Yeah. But, it, yeah, I do think being consistent is more of, like, a routine base. But, yeah, I go right top step, um, you know, and – Chip and Tripper next to me. Is anybody uh, in your ear I'm, going, why'd you call that? Or is that, is that, is there anybody that's a, uh, cause I know that oh, gets no. under pitching coach's skins when it's like, you know. Oh, they know better than that <laughs> for sure. And usually if they ask, you know, hey, why'd you throw that? I already snapped my clipboard. So they know like I'm pissed too. No. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And then last one, um, last, last one. Uh, are you a are you a, a slow stroll to the mound for a mound visit guy, or are you uh, you like to have a little pep in your step? Because that's camera time, so that's yeah. important. You don't get a lot of it, I'm sure. Yeah. So that this is your moment. Do you, you soak it in when you're heading out to the mound? Yeah. Does it depend on the situation? It depends if it's nationally televised or not. Yeah. I'll walk slower. <laughs> yeah. um, no, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, it's different. Sometimes if, if I just want to make it quick, I'll brisk jog without hurting myself. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, yeah. If, if yeah, if I want to slow the game down, I'll slow the game down. Sure. Um, you know, depending on the pitcher. Some some guys, you know, hate me being out there forever, and um, some guys need more time. So, um, again, case by case, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But well, I'm always, you know, swagged out when I'm walking. That's absolutely. For sure. Yeah, you got to put a little something into yeah. the walk. There's no doubt about that. Well, we appreciate you letting us be out here today. It's been awesome. Here with Toby DeMello, hitting coach at the University of Arizona. We're standing inside kind of the, the lab for you guys, the cages. Um, talk about why this space is so great for um, kind of your plan and the development of your guys. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing is um, it's really like access whenever they need it, right? And um, there's a keypad on the front. Everyone has their own keypad. Guys can get in here um, whenever they need. I think the alarm uh, gets set at 11 p.m. and uh, turns back off at like 6 a.m. So, you know, you're talking about um, anytime outside of those hours, guys can come in and hit. Um, and it's really all access, right? And it's whenever they need to, and because we're so limited in hours, um, that it, it takes doing extra stuff to be really good. Um, and then on top of that, it just, I mean, it's, it's awesome space and, and you can get a lot done. Um, we're fortunate where we have the main diamond, we have this, and we also have the backfields because it's an old spring training facility. Um, so we have a lot of space, which is, um, Again, it's a huge benefit advantage for us, um, but it just it's it's awesome, man. Like being at a place where it's it's hot here, um, so sometimes it's nice to just get inside and and get more reps. And sometimes I think um, the most pointless thing is just like that arm BP. Yep. And so getting in here, getting quality reps, and uh, make it a little challenging. It's, it's awesome. Will you guys ever take BP off the field and bring it in here before games, even if it's nice weather? Are there uh, other moments where you kind of utilize it for that? Yeah, I, every Sunday we hit inside. We don't take BP on the field on Sundays unless there's a weird, like sometimes ASU will play like a 4 o'clock game. Um, then, you know, we'll take some BP it's earlier on in the year. But every Sunday, typically we hit inside even on the road. Um, and there's even like some Tuesday games where it's like, we're going to get more swings in here. It's going to get more, you know, it's going to be more quality work in here. Um, and, and really that's, Chip's awesome about that. He's like, let's get good work in and like, let's get out, right? We don't need to be here for, for four hours if we don't need to be here for four hours. And so um, it's just about getting quality work, so we use it a lot. For those that stuck around and want a chance at some merch, make sure you leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for a chance to win yourself a t-shirt. Hope you all enjoyed our day here in Tucson. Thank you again to the whole staff here and especially our partners over at Kinetrax. Bear down.